We are co-hosted by the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Billy. Good morning, Rob. Great to be here. And the prodigal son returned home, Anish Sampali. Thanks. Thanks, Rob. How about uh, how about the Buckos this year? What do you think? I loved April. May yeah. I'm not a big fan. Not so much. They're sliding a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we had a great April, though, buddy. <laughs> yeah. we can, we'll always one, have April. One month. <laughs> hey, we're still in first place, as bad as I, we've been. The rest I of know. the division has been as bad. I know. So. All right, the hottest team in the division is the Cardinals, yeah. who are like 12 and 24 or whatever, right? Yeah. I was out there Saturday night. Where? To see the buckles. BNC Park? Yes, I beautiful was. Beautiful park. Yeah. Best beautiful. park in the country. Just yeah. beautiful I mean, park. views wise. Right. Yeah. Just amazing. So, saw the yeah. best fireworks I ever saw. Zambelli fireworks. Yeah. I watched those from Mount Washington. Well, I'll bet you could. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I literally did. My sister in law has a uh, townhouse up there. And from her balcony on their second level, you can see the fireworks. Yeah, great it, was, it was a great experience. I took a. Um, my oldest brother came out for his 73rd birthday to my campsite, and we went up there and Got to get a good game in. Spent the day down in the strip. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. If I'd have known that, I'd have told you to stop by the um, bakery down there to get me some biscotti. Oh, well, you know what? I was there. Yeah, everyone goes there. <laughs> you got to go there. <laughs> That's some biscotti right there, my brother. <laughs> uh, Kevin Knowles, our guest here, is the mayor of the city of Martinsburg. He is also the executive director of the Eastern Panhandle Home Builders Association and any other jobs that you have, sir. I represent a treatment facility out of Hanover, Pennsylvania, called Bright Life. Mm-hmm. You represent them. Yes. What does that mean? Uh, any anybody that has any type of private insurance uh, with uh, with companies or anything locally, um, I, they can get in contact with me, and I can hook them up with any type of uh, substance abuse disorder treatment. Uh, you know, we don't have any uh, private facilities here i think we have one within the, the within the state of west virginia right. state of west virginia is just all pretty much all medicaid right now so and uh in your past life you were president of the municipal league too correct i'm still very much involved with the municipal league i i serve uh with uh, the league to represent uh the state of west virginia's mayors in the southern league of cities uh which we were just in san antonio had some great meetings and you know, it's always nice to be able to hear from other cities and other communities of what they're doing, and it's also nice to know that you know the things that we think are go- that are happening to us are happening everywhere. It's not just here in, in the city of Martinsburg, the state of West Virginia. Yeah. You released a statement recently about an incident with the city of Martinsburg Police Department, and I uh, read it over the air yesterday. And the facts of the case is, I viewed the video yesterday effectively that a motorist flipped off the police officers in the city of Martinsburg. Two of them uh, did a traffic stop then based on that, it seemed. I don't know for a fact uh, in that particular situation. Uh, but then arrested, incarcerated the person uh, for, I believe, a total of three days. And that's all I understand at this point. Yeah, it's... it's and it's that person a, has retained counsel. It, it is. It's a, And I, I speak a little bit about it uh, because of the legalities of it, but... Uh, I could tell you that I, I don't condone any type of behavior like that by any uh, city city officer or um, any city employee, and I made that very clear. And we've had meetings with the the, the chief of police and and the, his uh, his supervisors, the deputy chief and captain, and and we've made it clear that uh, you know we don't want to have this happen again. And so there there's a there's a very intense investigation going on. Uh, reviewing tapes and seeing what if anything was uh, uh, who was at fault and, and and address them according to uh, state state law state stature and and the uh, we have civil service here in in the um, in the state of West Virginia which kind of ties you up a little bit if if, if you wanted to go any further so we it's a time process uh, and they're going to be reviewing those tapes and and taking action and as a result of that we've uh, the the, uh, the police department put out a uh, a memo that they're going to review moving forward uh, all of their arrest uh, tapes uh, just to make sure that everybody's staying on task and and I'm not saying that that, that everybody isn't I'm just there you know sometimes you have a, a few people that take it a little bit further than they should and we want to make sure that we're addressing that on the spot 
uh, that we're not finding something out that happens in February. Uh, and this uh, was February 10, apparently. That was February 10, and, and that we're not just finding that out. So, you know, this is a, a, a learning experience. It's one of those tough learning experiences that we had to, to, to get, but we're, we're moving forward, and we have a plan that, 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 uh, that are going to be working very close. And keep in mind that, uh, you know, we are going to be starting the uh, process of interviewing for uh, a new chief. Uh, chief Shortwood is retiring uh, in the next uh, 25, 30 days. And, and that's not related to this incident? Oh, not not at all. Nothing. Mm -hmm. This has nothing to do with the uh, Chief Shortwood. He's, he's been a, a great servant to the city for 37 years, and, and uh, he can go out hanging his head very high. And, and uh, we're, we're just looking forward to moving forward with uh, – with the with the new chief to be able to implement some of these uh, uh, policies and and just to make sure that everybody is being held accountable. What's the status of the two officers? Uh, uh, current currently, there there is a, an internal investigation going on. Uh, there has been uh, some action uh, that I can't speak about to one officer, and then there'll be uh, others uh, others that have been involved in in similar situations like that that will be addressed and are they on active duty currently uh yes so uh, most of them are on active duty currently in regards to the policy you're implementing with uh body cam footage being reviewed after each arrest whose decision was that and then who will be reviewing the video well i, I think that was a collaborative decision with uh you know the, the chief of police and his uh supervisors after a long conversation with the administration and and um, the people that will be reviewing those videos are my understanding would be the supervisors which would be the lieutenants of the shifts uh, or the captain or even uh, the deputy chief and uh, i believe they've put a 48-hour period on that to be able to review that kevin are the officers required to have the body cameras on all the time they're uh, on interactions is my understanding that they're supposed to have that body camera on so if they're pulling you over uh yes that body cam camera should be on if they're if they're coming to your house knocking on your door for a warrant or or, or whatever that body camera should be on and what is the penalty if they do not have it on you know i don't i don't know okay. that bill i know that i know that that is a policy and and that is something else that they will be addressing that if there has been officers that have not had the camera on when they're supposed to be there's there's going to be actions taken you know whether that's a, a conversation whether that's something in their file uh, that that I don't know the process to. And how long are the body camera films kept in archive? You know, it's my understanding that um, they're they're there for quite a long time. If not, you, know, you could pull them back whenever. I mean, it it, it goes into a uh, I believe a server. So it's not they don't. That's not, these days that stuff doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the reaction uh, of the police themselves to realize that every arrest is going to be subject to a review? Well, I, I think the reaction uh, from the reaction, I think the reaction after the reaction of what the video uh, showed uh, that um, I think now you're going to see officers that uh, that. I think their eyes are going to be a little bit more wide open, and and you know I'm I'm a big supporter of the of the, uh, of the police department. I always have been. Uh, any any tool that they need, I give. But we also have to remember that you know they're in a tough spot, but but still the the citizens need to have their civil rights and their rights uh, mm -hmm. respected just like anybody else. Also, also, the body cam I've always thought is protection for the officer. Well, most definitely, but yeah. I mean yeah. just just like in any case, uh, human beings make mistakes, yeah. and yeah. and unfortunately. We're, we're all on camera one way or another mm -hmm. sometime during the day, and mm -hmm. I think the average of, of a person's on camera eight or ten times a day, and you don't even know about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Kevin, just I want to pivot to um, more about police, but, you know, the the um, Chief Swartworth who's retiring, what's what's the search look like? Is it internal? Is it national? Is it regional? How are you guys doing that? Well, it, it's it's both. We've taken internal and external uh resumes and uh, I believe it I believe it doesn't end till the end of the month but uh, currently we are looking at doing starting some interview processes with some that have really stood out so that we can be ahead of the game a little bit uh, but yeah we will be interviewing both internally and externally and George's last date is when mid-june sometime I, I, I think it's June 9th that's what I was thinking I, th well, I, yeah. I want to say that it is it, it is in the beginning of June it would probably be the first pay period or second pay period in June that 
kind of coordinate things for himself. But again, I can't say enough about George Shortwood. Yeah. Is there a thought to maybe have like an interim chief if the search isn't concluded by then? Well, well, we do have a deputy chief. Okay. Okay. So deputy chief Gibbons has really stepped up during this investigation and everything, and and uh, he will take over that spot uh, until somebody until somebody comes in and, and until we select somebody. Awesome. Kevin, I want to go back to the video from the police cam footage from the incident of February 10. Have you seen it? Uh, yes. There's a period during the course of that video where the audio is then off from the police office. Is that standard operating procedure? That's a, or were that, this, were That's the, a problem, too. That's also a problem. Yes, yeah, so that is being addressed. Okay, very good. Any idea when you expect to wrap up this internal investigation? Well, I, you know what? I'd like to say that it would be done this week. Uh, that's that our that's our hopes, but uh, you know it could take a little bit longer just because of what they may or may not find. You had a city council meeting last night. We did. Tell me in regards to anything, I would say major or productive that came out of it. I and mean, looking over the agenda, there's a lot of you know taking care of business kind of stuff that was on there. Obviously. Well, you know one of the things that you know we we we, we ended up uh, raising our fees for our garbage collection. How um, much? It went from 300 to 375 uh, this year, and up to 450 for the dumpsters. Uh, the increase in the dumping fees um, made that kind of push that in that direction, and and we've also not been fully staffed in that in that department uh, based on our growth with businesses and and people moving to the city of Martinsburg. So it's going to help grow that department and also to. Um, alleviate the the extra fee charges that we're paying and uh, was that an annual basis the three yeah the 375 is is, is annual. it was 300 mm -hmm. it went up to 375 yeah so you know you mentioned businesses i'm, I'm really curious about that as um you know i kind of split my time between martinsburg and in allentown pa now and um i, I was mentioning that i that I sell Martinsburg to everybody that I that I talk to uh, that you know. Maybe well, we hasn't. appreciate that. Yeah, <laughs> maybe he hasn't visited. Uh, you know, just just how how great I of sell a city it is. Him. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> well, we we're, we're both doing each other favors then. So, um, can you speak to any businesses that are coming in? Maybe you know not things that are under wraps at this point, but just what's what's coming into Martinsburg. Well, what, what can we expect? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, currently uh, you have. Uh, uh, this garage that's opening up over there at the old appliance place mm -hmm. on, on King and, and Raleigh Street. Um, just had a meeting there the other day and was uh, able to review and talk to all of the uh, people involved. He has eight vendors that are going to be involved in there, and, and they should be done there in June sometime to be able to to bring in a, uh, it's more like a food court type thing. I, I think it's a going to be a huge asset to the mm -hmm. city if you've been watching the work over there they've put a pat in a very nice patio on raleigh street and they're going to be able to uh, uh they're 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 projecting about 250 people a day going through there mm -hmm. which yeah you know f for me that's a that's a great asset if that's going to happen because mm -hmm. that is right in the our opening corridor of, of downtown not to mention what monuments doing up there in in the old uh, interwoven mills there i mean I uh, had an opportunity to tour that just a, a week or so ago, and, and that place is just uh, coming along unbelievably fast from what I've seen from the start of it. They have the, the, the all the stud up, the electric and everything is all uh, set through the whole place, and, and they're, they're, they're on task to finish, finishing the first phase there uh, in um, uh, uh, before June of 2024, mm -hmm. uh, which is a huge deal. You're, you're talking another 400... Uh, apartments to be opened up in the downtown area. They're going to be uh, market value apartments, and which makes it very important to keep that mark train going because yeah. we're going to be recruiting from from outside for people that, that are working in the D.C., Baltimore area, down in that area to be able to, to move here, to be able to walk through town, go down to the, the garage. Yeah. We have uh, another uh, spa that just opened up down in the old uh, uh, um, Flowers Unlimited building. You have Diego Lasada, who is who has bought uh, several of these buildings that has put in businesses and business plans. You, we had, uh, uh, is it, I think it's called, uh, it's a whiskey and oyster place down on Stoney's. Stoney's, mm -hmm. you have Stoney's. Uh, that's one of his buildings. Notice how Anish knew that right away. <laughs> I love oysters. <laughs> not, not the whiskey, of course. <laughs> 
I'm allergic to whiskey. <laughs> you don't touch that stuff. <laughs> I break out in spots. Yeah. You're clean. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, with all those businesses that mm-hmm. are coming up, and you know, you're going to see a new marquee now down on on uh, the the Apollo before winter time. So that's going to be a huge asset. The downtown quarter of Queen Street, uh, very few. Uh, uh, buildings are vacant. Uh, we'll have a ribbon cutting uh, tomorrow for some. Uh, Drew Johnson has fixed up the old, uh, one of the old buildings there across from next to next to Habanero mm-hmm. that uh, he has put high end Airbnbs up there. They're beautiful. These are beautiful Airbnbs that he has up there. And and downstairs he's going to put in a restaurant. Also, so I mean, nice. what kind? What style? I, I, I'm honest. Uh, I, you know what? I don't know, but I'm hoping for an Italian restaurant. <laughs> How's, there, that? How's that, buddy? Hook me up. Wait, hook me up, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need it. We need a, you know, since Casa Fasone is, yeah. is not, yeah. but we have not really had a, a an Italian restaurant. I don't. I, you consider you consider the Olive Garden an Italian restaurant? Don't you ask that's, me that that's, question. That's, <laughs> that's, don't you ask me that question. <laughs> Cream of the crop, that Rob's been in. So <laughs> don't you ask me that question on this show. And expect a serious answer. That's, yeah. that's lunch next week. Now, why don't you ask me if I eat Chef Boyardee out of a can next? <laughs> yeah, Kevin, when you were on last, you mentioned the Roundhouse, and as a consequence, there's been quite a bit of discussion by subsequent guests on the Roundhouse. Uh, I, one, one of the things that I was not aware of is that both the county and the city contribute to the Roundhouse for certain events but not on a regular basis. But yet it is one of the, in my view, one of the gems of potential uh, uh, for both the county and the city. Is there any consideration given to becoming more of a partner with the Roundhouse Authority? Uh, in, in my view, yes. Yeah. In my view, yes. Uh, in fact, last night at the city council meeting, we, we were able to make things happen to push that forward a little bit uh, faster. Uh, coming out of the roundhouse, there's only a one-way street going out to Queen Street. We've changed that direction, so now people can find it a lot easier. So we're going to be changing the direction of that street that you can gain access off of Queen Street uh, to go straight into the roundhouse. Uh, That'd be great. Mm-hmm. We're also uh, doing a, uh, a like a turnaround uh, with part of the bridge project. There's going to be a turnaround there in front of the roundhouse, so the People can come around. If somebody gets they, they get stuck, they can turn around and go back up to uh, uh, go up uh, Liberty Street there. So, so we're 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 working very actively. Uh, I've been working very actively, and council's been very good up to this point to be able to help move things forward. So, uh, I I I see um, more things happening at the the roundhouse. I've plus I have I've seen it because I, I ran the home show and the home show. If, if that's any if that is any picture of what could be done at the the roundhouse, then you know we're sitting on a uh, something that's ready to explode because you bring five thousand yeah. people in on a weekend to the city of Martinsburg for one event one a year. Yeah. You can imagine doing that ten, fifteen, yeah. twenty times a year. You know, before you go, hold on yeah. one second. Just some breaking news: GOP Representative George Santos has been charged with money laundering, fraud, theft, and making false statements. Wow. Uh, that's a lot. And uh, also, the CPI number came in uh, much lower than they thought. And as a result, stock market futures are popping um, north there. And we are a minute away from the opening bell. Good. Nope. Yeah. Uh, I forgot, Kevin. It was, uh, it's okay. It was that's all right. Good, good thought. Well, I mean, just this is a pretty broad question, but from the state perspective, what what do you need to see in the state legislature this year to help the city of Martinsburg continue to drive forward? Leave us alone. <laughs> that's so, that simple. Yeah. Leave us alone. In, in, in what capacities? I mean, what uh, what, what do you? I in, can see the headline now. Mayor Knuckles Knoll says, "Leave us alone." <laughs> well, I mean, I don't mean just Martinsburg. I yeah. mean, Martinsburg is uh, you know we have home rule. We we do very well. We're very finan- financially sound. We 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 take care of everything that we need to take care of around. You see a lot of growth. You see a lot of good things good projects that are happening here if the if the state starts pulling any of our uh, ability to mm-hmm. to generate revenue then you're going to see that go away right you know so um you know i i i want to work with the legislators i i don't have to get into details i've talked sure. to enough about what what would hurt us uh, if it happens and and i don't need to beat that that horse or that was that dead horse <laughs> that? <did>. or kicking <laughs> the, <laughs> the, 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 the drum what did jason baker say <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to 
Oh, I wish it was a great. It was the most beautiful <laughs> mixed metaphor yeah, ever. I don't want to. I don't want to be a broken horse. <laughs> <laughs> Very quickly, I thought: uh, Is there any thought about bringing rail days back to the roundhouse? I believe that they they have that, but it's not to the to the uh, extent. Effect, the extent that you yeah. have. They have something like the, that. The day back but in I don't, I don't 15 have, years ago, it was a, a real draw. Yeah, I don't, have, fun, yeah. I don't have anything to do with those event-type stuff. Uh, one thing I can say is the city has been getting more involved financially. Uh, it hasn't been in the past. And I went to the county, and the county gave us three seats because the county was, was doing all the appointments. They gave us three seats to appoint. So we have three great members that are working very, very hard on that. Uh, if anything were to be done with the, the roundhouse as far as um, liquidating uh, the authority, there is legislation there that would need to be done for, that, for an entity to take that over. Mm -hmm. So in, in theory, and I say that in theory, if the city of Martinsburg wanted to take the uh, the um, the roundhouse over there would have to be legislative action for that to happen what that entails I I don't know but it's my understanding that it's it's a, it's a little bit in, 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 it's very hard to be able to do that mm -hmm. so um, my uh, my hopes are that you know somewhere along the line that we all can come together to make this thing what it should be yeah. you know it is it is a tourist attraction but it's not a tourist attraction if we're not having stuff down there yeah. sure you know i mean it's it's just a drive by yeah Kevin, hey, we're out of time. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, thank you very much for your time this morning. I'm going to send you out with some Italian music and maybe get that Italian restaurant coming up here, babe. What do you think? What, huh? Huh? Manja, manja. What do you think? <laughs> hey, thank you, Kevin. All right, thanks.